Private Diary has prepared something special for you today. Are you ready to go back in time and dive into a fairy tale? Then let's get to it! Once upon a time, there was a beautiful lady called Patricia. That's me. Welcome, knights and ladies. Wow. How am I supposed to move in such a long dress? When are jeans going to be invented? Excuse me, I got off topic. Let's go back to the story. My mother died when I was young. I was raised by my father, a count. He loved traveling. Several months ago, dad visited Japan, and its traditions made an impression on him. When he came back home, he started growing bonsai trees in our palace. Dad was immensely proud of his garden and took diligent care of it. Dad, lawnmowers have not been invented yet. Oops, you're right, let me fix that. The internet? YouTube and shopping malls didn't exist yet either. That's why Dad hired a jester for our entertainment. I'm bored. I have just the thing to cheer you up. Look at this cat. <laughs> I've got to show this to my friend. People love to share cat memes, even centuries ago. However, back then, they used pigeon post. Oh, it's from Patricia. My teenage years weren't all that different from yours. Life was great, except for one thing. Dad kept finding rich suitors for me. The thing was, I wasn't ready for a serious relationship. I liked writing carriages and going to balls and wanted to be carefree for a while yet. That's why I mercilessly rejected all the boys. One time, I pretended to be blind to get rid of one of my suitors. Oh, Patricia, if you will have me, this chest of gold will be yours. Oh, who are you? I can't see anything. Hey, let me out. Do you still want to marry me? Stay there and think it through. <laughs> of course, my antics infuriated Dad. Each time yet another groom ran away in horror, Dad had steam coming out of his ears. Why do you have to be so stubborn? This is a disaster. I need a milkshake. Patricia, one day you'll go too far. The Count will lose it, imprison you in a tower, and fire me. Shh. Mind your own business. Or do you want me to put you on silent mode? One day, a friend of my dad's from Japan sent his son, a guy called Mamoru, to stay with us. He tried to win me over too. In my country, chrysanthemums are seen as a symbol of perfection. Please accept this flower. I think think you were perfect, just like it. Seriously? The other suitors gave me gold, but even that didn't work. And you expect to impress me with some flower? The creations of nature are hundreds of times more precious than all the gold in the world. Quit wasting my time, buddy. But Patricia, I said beat it. Marmoru could only sigh and go back to Japan. Dad went ballistic, and a milkshake didn't cut it anymore. He was furious. Patricia, you scared away your last suitor. I'm firing your jester. That'll show you. It's not fair. It's not up for discussion. Dad immediately fired my jester. Before leaving, he glared at me like he was that psycho Pennywise. I told you this would happen, Patricia. Burr. I don't know about you, but his glare gave me goosebumps. Later, I told Agnes what happened. You brought this on yourself. Why did you reject all your suitors? To be honest, I'm just afraid of falling in love. After all, love can hurt. Oh, come on. It's true. My mom died a long time ago, but dad is still grieving. He even planted a rose in her memory and often talks to it. Oh dear, our daughter has grown up so stubborn. I don't know what to do with her. I wish you were here, honey. I miss you. I don't ever want to be that sad. That's why I rejected all those boys. Yeah, as if. You're just being picky because you think you're a princess. I don't expect you to understand. After I turned Mamoru down, rumors spread all over the country that I was spoiled and insufferable. It was driving dad up the wall. No decent aristocrat will want to marry you now. Whatever, I'll just not marry then. So I'll never see my grandchildren? Oh, woe is me. Dad was so gutted, he even stopped taking care of his precious bonsai garden. The plants started to wither, and dad hired a gardener, an ordinary commoner called, um, actually, I didn't know his name, so I just kept calling him gardener. He was dirty, shaggy, and wore ragged clothes, but my father liked him because he worked hard and took good care of his garden. Of course, he often stared at me with admiration, but I didn't care about him at all. Good morning, Patricia. You look great. Tell me something I do not know. I turned up the music and turned away from the gardener. If only headphones had been invented so no one could distract me from listening to all my favorite songs. A couple days after that, Agnes invited me to a ball. Music, delicious food, dancing. It was basically a party. I was going to ride in a carriage, but it turned out a wheel had broken off. As luck would have it, there was no one in our palace that evening who could repair it, and I didn't have a fairy godmother with a magic wand. After all, I wasn't in a fairy tale. But then, I can fix it in five minutes. Seriously? We'll go for it. How much should I pay you? Three kisses. What? 
Dream on. It seems getting to that ball isn't that important for you. He turned around as if to leave, but I stopped him. It was vital for me to attend that ball. If I didn't, all the nobles would say I hadn't come because I'd been kidnapped by an evil dragon. Those gossips. Anyway, I agreed to the gardener's terms. He quickly repaired the carriage as promised, and I kissed him on the cheek three times without even trying to hide my disgust. If you tell anyone about this, I will turn your head into a pumpkin. After that, I finally came to the ball. It went great, but the next morning, I was in for a shock. Someone had sent me a nasty, anonymous letter. I saw you kiss a commoner. Pay me 20 gold coins or I'll tell everyone about it? That was the last thing I needed. Agnes and the rest of my family would turn their backs on me if they found out I kissed an ordinary gardener. I had to steal gold coins from Dad and put them on the bench in the garden like my blackmailer demanded. Are you wondering why I climbed up a tree? To see who will take those coins. I need to find out who's blackmailing. Me. But of course, I wasn't that lucky. I didn't notice that there was a hornet's nest on the branch I was sitting on. Soon enough, the wasps turned on attack mode and surrounded me. <gasps> Leave me alone! I'm not tasty! Ah! I'm falling! Sorry about the technical issue. It's all right now. Almost. While I had been fighting off the wasps, my blackmailer had taken the coins and left. Ugh, dang it. I sat down on the bench and tried to come up with a new plan. Hmm, who's mad enough to blackmail me? That's right, my jester. He was fired because of me. I found him in a small tavern. He was doing a stand-up bit on stage. The audience loved his jokes. Everyone kept laughing and clapping. I approached him after his performance and asked him if he was the one that sent the letter and blackmailed me. Why would I do that? Well, to get back at me. It was my fault dad fired you. To be honest, I'm glad for it. Now I'm doing what I truly love. Soon, I'm going to be playing at the Royal Theater. So it all worked out. Hmm. It didn't seem like he was lying. I thanked him for entertaining me for so many years, wished him luck, and left. Back in the palace, dad was nervously pacing because oh. he discovered his gold coins were missing. Oops. Mm. I tried to tiptoe past him, but... Oh, Patricia, do you know who <gasps> stole my gold? No, Daddy. I have no idea who took those 20 gold coins. How do you know how many are missing? Um, a lucky guess? Phew, that was close. Oh. A couple days after that, Agnes threw another ball. Yeah, my friends sure like to have fun. Mm. I decided to let loose too. I was about <sighs> to get in the carriage when I discovered my favorite pendant had broken. Mm. The gardener came to the rescue again. I can fix it. The payment is the same as last time. Three kisses. Doing that once was humiliating enough. It's your choice. He turned to leave, but I stopped him again. The pendant used to be my mother's, and it was important to me. I'd agreed to the gardener's terms again. All done. Now about that payment. Okay, I get it. I suggested we hide in the stable so that no one would see us. However, at the worst possible moment, Dad walked in and went ballistic. I can't believe what I'm seeing. You turned down all those rich suitors only to kiss a penniless gardener? Dad also found out I was the one who had stolen his gold coins. That was the last last straw for him. You're out of control. I'm kicking you out. Such behavior is unacceptable. Can you believe it? My own father threw me out on the street. Luckily, I had friends I could turn to. Or at least, that's what I thought. When I came to Agnes's ball, I heard everyone discussing the latest gossip. Our dear prude Patricia kissed a dirty gardener. How humiliating. <laughs> Yeah, they laughed at me and chased me away. I ended up on the street after all. I could have gone to a hotel, but the only thing of value I had was my mother's pendant and I didn't want to sell it. The only thing I could do was ask the gardener to let me stay at his place. After all, he was the one who got me into that mess. Okay, you can stay at my place, Patricia, but it's not a palace. He wasn't lying. His um. hut was dilapidated. Okay, show me my room. I want to get a good night's sleep. I can only offer you the haystack in that far corner. Great. At night, I couldn't hold back my emotions anymore and burst into tears. I could have married a prince and needed for nothing, but instead, I was forced to live with a penniless gardener. Enduring was getting harder for me by the day. I couldn't comb my hair or wash my dresses without servants, so I looked shaggy and dirty. Luckily, I at least had a roof over my head, although it didn't really help when it rained. How did living like this not drive you crazy? I am an orphan. No one has ever really taken care of me, so I'm used to enjoying 
enjoying the simple things in life. For example, look at the raindrops on the grass. Aren't they beautiful? Even more so than your pendant. Sorry, but I don't get it. By the way, Patricia, I can't provide for both of us. If you want to stay here, you'll have to find a job. I don't know how to do anything. We will fix that. I will teach you my craft. I shrugged indifferently. As soon as the rain stopped, we went outside, and he started to tell me about the plants and how to take care of them. To be honest, at first, I wanted to yawn out of boredom, but soon I got into the swing of it. This is a wild orchid. It's not only beautiful, but also useful. This flower is used to create ointments and perfumes. Mmm, it smells amazing! After studying for some time, I got a job on a farm that was growing wheat. It was used to make flour for my favorite cakes. Who would have thought? I planted some flowers next to the gardener's hut to liven it up a little bit. However, I didn't know their name. Wow, look! I see the first sprouts. Congrats! You will soon watch the peonies bloom. Peonies! Amazing! It was the first time in my life I felt such awe. I took care of the peonies every day and wasn't afraid to get my hands dirty. One day, Agnes saw me. She went so far far as to get out of her carriage and make fun of me. All my friends will die laughing when I tell them you're a dirty farmer now. Before I could say anything to that, the gardener stood up for me. Dirty hands can always be washed, but you can't wash a dirty soul. Patricia is doing honest work while all you do is gossip. What? How dare you talk to me like that? Agnes stamped her foot right into a puddle. Dirt splattered on her dress and she screamed like she'd stepped into hot lava. Ew! I'll have to shower for ages now! With those words, she got back into her carriage and took off. I saw the gardener in a new light. That guy was more noble than all the aristocrats I knew. Patricia, what is it? You're blushing. Are you falling for me? What? No, it's just, it's just hot today. One day, the gardener came home looking miserable. I accidentally cut a rose in your father's garden. The count was furious and fired me. I need to move to another city and look for a new job now. I gasped. It was probably the rose dad had planted in mom's memory, but it still didn't give him the right to send the gardener away. That was beneath him. I ran home and told my father off. Dad, how could you? The gardener worked so hard. Will you truly ruin his life because of some flower? I'll move to another city with him and I'm going to marry him. Why him? Because I love him. At the same oh. moment, the gardener appeared and smiled slyly. I did it. Finally. With these words, he took off his wig, shabby clothes, and I realized the gardener had been <gasps> Mamoru all along. What is the meaning of this? Sweetie, remember Mamoru? His father wasn't just my friend from Japan. He is also one of the richest men in Asia. It turned out Mamoru had disguised himself as a poor orphan and got the job as our gardener. He had also sent that anonymous letter to blackmail me. Dad knew all about it and helped Mamoru. His favorite rose was still blooming in our garden, safe and sound. I felt like a fool and blew up on him. Why did you do all that? To teach you a lesson, my beautiful, spoiled Patricia. I love you too. I knew that deep Deep down, you are a good person. He leaned in to kiss me, but I jerked away from him. I don't want to have anything to do with you, you liars. Patricia, stop. Give her time. She needs some time alone. I walked around the garden for several hours and thought about everything that had happened. As I looked at the rose dad had planted, I realized that love wasn't something I should be afraid of. Without it, one's heart withers like a flower without the sun. I'd fallen in love with Mamoru, not because he was rich, but because he had a pure soul. So, eventually, I came back and said I forgave them. You're right. The creations of nature are a hundred times more precious than all the gold in the world. Then accept this chrysanthemum sweet Patricia. You have my blessing, children. We lived happily ever after. The moral of the story is timeless. It could have all happened in the 18th century or in the modern days. Did you like this fairy tale? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Private Diary channel.